Welcome to the Into the Planet podcast. This week, we're going to cover my exciting activities in New York and some really cool projects I have coming up. And, and this podcast is actually going to be on video as well. <laughs> it is. We're fumbling a little bit here as, as uh, Robert's uh, running the soundboard and we're doing a little setup here. But if you go to YouTube, you'll be able to see us and not right. just listen to us. Yeah. And it's at youtube.com slash Jill Heinerth. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of an experiment. We'll see whether this is yeah. uh, this is fun for our viewers to be able to see us at home. <laughs> so we have we have like a room full of like high end audio and video produ production equipment. But we live in a closet. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, oh, that's so funny. You know, I was at an event uh, this week in New York, the Wings World Quest uh, annual event, which we'll talk more about a little bit later. But the um, the MC for the gala evening was Ophira Eisenberg from NPR. She's okay. a mm -hmm. stand-up comedian and a host and... Uh, She's truly remarkable, but she and her husband share a condo in New York that's even smaller than this. And and I was telling her that I've done a couple of NPR interviews this year where the host was actually inside their closet, like surrounded by blankets and duvets and clothing, anything to dampen the sound of New York. Yeah. <laughs> And we're, we're actually doing this podcast from what is essentially our living room and bicycle garage. It's our living room. <laughs> it's our recreational start. My scuba gear is here. Our, we've got, what do we have? Six bicycles hanging off the walls. Yeah, different um, places here, yeah. We have all of our adventure equipment yeah. in an 800-square-foot condo yeah. with a waterfall outside. So we, right. we might not have the sirens and sounds of New York, but... We do have water. Oh, and they're also paving the street. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is like perfect timing. Well, you know, I think um, just in this COVID time, when everyone's been you know, Zoom broadcasting from home, you kind of get used to yeah. the, the sounds, the ambient sounds of someone's neighborhood or even yeah. some of the unexpected visitors that show up on yeah on visuals. Yeah, like <laughs> people's cats and kids and dogs. Yeah. You know, I, I've just given up mm. on the whole like trying to make this place into like a, a sound stage. It's just not going to work. No, it's not no. going to happen. No. We, we live in a 200-year-old yeah. mill, so the walls are like, you know, three two, foot thick, three feet thick. Yeah. yeah, which is great. Stone. We'll survive a nuclear blast in this yeah. place. Yeah. And it really blocks the sound. But we have also have like 50 year old windows, <laughs> <We> <laughs> which do. don't quite uh, yeah. close exactly. Well, we're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my week in New York with Wings World Quest. Wow. Like what an incredible experience. Yeah. I realized I had three days of events where the Events were organized, but also like directed, put on, like there wasn't a single man on stage. Like it was just women, explorers uh -huh. and scientists from all around the world, incredibly diverse group. But it was really different to be okay. at an event where there were no male presenters. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, honestly, how many events do you think in the world where there are no female presenters and everyone thinks that's just normal? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but tell me about what is yeah. Wings, Wings West Quest? It sounds like a place you go to get barbecue chicken wings. Wings. World Quest. Okay. It's an amazing... It's not Wild Wings? No, or... no, no. Okay. It's an organization. They'll be 20 years old next year, so they'll be having a pretty exciting um, anniversary. But Wings World Quest supports women explorers and scientists. Wings World, World Quest. Okay, you said crest. Oh, Wings Because they, they gave you a, a, a medal, I mean, a, 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 pin, a pin, which yeah. was a crest. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tongue twister. I'm sorry. Wings World Quest. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Anyway, they support women, you know, researchers, scientists, explorers with unrestricted grants to keep them in the field doing their work. Wow. And they also provide emergency funds and they have a flag carrier program for young explorers as well. So young explorers, early career professionals might apply for a flag and have a you know small financial stipend as well as the flag. But what they get with that is a whole community of mentors, remarkable 
women um, to help support them and guide them on their way. Like, you know, Sylvia Earle and Jane Goodall are fellows of the society, but so are, you know, names that might not be as well known, but are equally remarkable, like Liev Arneson and Anne Bancroft, those two women. Um, Liev was the first uh, woman to ski unsupported to the South Pole and leave and Anne together were the I believe the first women pair to cross Antarctica on skis mm-hmm. I remember um, that it wasn't yeah. that long ago no the and you know everybody's research uh leads to you know really exciting collaborations like um I met Sephra Alexandra a young um flag carrier and explorer in residence for the society she is the seed huntress so her work is finding and saving seeds around the world to ensure our biodiversity no matter what happens in terms of climate change or disasters like you know you think about the irish potato blight that Mm -hmm. you know starved just so many people Mm -hmm. well you might not have heard about like a taro blight that killed the number one food source down in Indonesia. Well, because they had safe safeguarded the seeds, they could be propagated and replanted mm-hmm. with a new um, resistant uh, strain. So, you know, when you can conserve that biodiversity, then you can be prepared for whatever happens. And one small seed can be propagated into, you know, millions it's really fascinating. I mean, people have heard of the seed vault in the Arctic. Yeah. So that's kind of the same idea, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, that's one of them. I mean, there are international seed banks like that one in Svalbard, but there are also local initiatives and, and even just teaching gardeners how to save their own seeds so they don't have to buy them every year mm-hmm. is really important or how to safeguard organic heirloom strains, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to interject. Yes, I just I'm looking at a windowsill across the room there. Yes. Where I have s- seeds started. That's right. And I bought those seeds. They were probably three dollars and fifty cents Canadian for a pack of about fifty seeds. Right. And one head of lettuce today at the supermarket. One head of romaine lettuce. It's probably more than was that. Was five dollars and s- five ninety five. Right. Canadian. And those fifty seeds will grow us. Yeah lettuce greens for the entire winter that we'll just harvest right off of our windowsill. Yeah, we we grow them uh, hydroponically. Mm-hmm. We start them now and then eventually in the next week or so I'll I'll be putting the seedlings into trays that mm-hmm. have liquid nutrition, right. hy- hydroponics. Right. And then throughout the winter Mm-hmm. When we want a salad, we just go over with a pair of scissors and we cut our greens right off the right yeah. off the the plant. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I just think it's fascinating. It seeds is are, fascinating. People, seeds are so important. Well, and if you saved those seeds, you would never have to buy them again. I have saved those seeds. <laughs> the, the, seed, the lettuce that we're eating today, I bought five years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But seeds. I mean, from the lettuce that you grow, you could continue to harvest right. and uh, and store those seeds. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So that's, okay, so that's just one person that I made a connection with this weekend. But some of the other um, people who were inducted as fellows this weekend, um, Raywin Grant. So she is a big predator researcher. And Mm -hmm. interestingly, she unknowingly kind of fell into the research that's particularly protecting female bears. Oh, wow. So uh, what I didn't realize before is that an awful lot of like research on large animals is done on the male of the species because Ah. nobody wants to disturb the female with their babies, right? right? right. And I've been a part of that. Like when we're collecting DNA from a killer whale, we're looking Mm. for a bull. We're not wanting to, you know, scare, injure, you know, a a female with her babies. Mm -hmm. But, But Ray has been looking at how... Um, female bears are finding, and where they're finding dens, for instance, mm-hmm. um, and they're not exactly the best part of the habitat. So she's trying to figure out, like, are they being driven away from more aggressive male animals and their habitat? Are they, you know, just taking the best place where they're like least likely to be bothered? And it mm-hmm. might be kind of very close to humanity. Mm-hmm. Like she was looking at a, a bear den where a bear had a couple cubs, like literally under an overpass of a highway so she's looking at where predators intersect with humanity and how to continue you know protecting them not just with with bears but other big carnivores Mm -hmm. as well 
you know, we are definitely, definitely encroaching on on wild habitat. Yeah, I, that breaks my heart when a you know a, I read a story of, or about a bear that came into a suburban neighborhood and became quote a nuisance. Yes, and then eventually they had to put them down. And who's the nuisance? Who's the nuisance? Yeah, exactly. it's humanity leaving the garbage out. That bear yeah. and and twenty generations of that bear before it lived on that land. Well, she was talking about some of the rewilding efforts that are going on, and and when good education can happen, there can be very simple solu- solutions. For instance, um, she, you know. With her, she's got a PhD and postdoc, and she's just an incredible scientist. But she's spending an, a lot, an awful lot of time in the Midwest, r- removing the lower level of barbed wire from barbed wire fences wow. separating ranges. Yeah. Because, for instance, yeah. did you know that pronghorn antelopes do not jump over fences? I used to live in South, South Dakota. Dakota and Montana, yes. where they, yeah, and we, I knew that. So they're replacing the lowest level of the barbed wire with just clean wire so the pronghorns can slip underneath. Because a lot of pronghorns were dying because they got injured squeezing under the barbed wire and tearing up their backs. You know why? Why? Because Americans want cheap Big Macs. Yeah. That's why. It's all about beef. It it is all about beef. And unfortunately, when we sort of upset the balance of nature and remove predators from an environment, then, then... that's a big problem. Yeah. So she's trying to work with local ranchers by sitting down with them for meetings and mm-hmm. coffees and and just showing them that she's willing to do the work too and not cost mm. them anything, but come up with some simple solutions that, you know, help the ranchers to love the yeah. predators and understand the predators. And, um, and then also she's doing good data to show them that, you know what, you know, that grizzly passed through your property 17 times according to my tracking collar and he didn't eat a single one of your cattle that's right yeah you know i i i eat meat yeah you eat meat yeah but more and more i'm shying away from beef and yeah it, it's yeah. and it's it really has to do with the way that beef is raised. Well, it also has to do with water use too. And the wa- exactly. There's so many ills in our society yeah. that can be traced to what I just said, that people want to have that cheap burger or yeah. That, that, yeah. that flank steak, you know. I mean, there's water issues, there's land use, uh, there's what happened to the wolves? Mm-hmm. I mean, the wolves were mm-hmm. hunted into extinction, yeah. practically extinction, yeah. in the American West uh, because they also had a taste for beef. Well, we also need to, these days, start thinking about the human-animal interaction and stuff, right. too, about, you know, passing along zoonotic diseases. Like, yeah. like, for instance, I saw an interesting article about somebody who had a an emu farm, and they had a sick emu that caught avian flu because wow. avian flu is going all over the place these days. It's yeah. it's pretty bad in the East Coast. And so the person had a picture of themselves like forehead to forehead with their emu just going, my emu's sick, and I'm giving it cuddles. And, oh, no. And I'm going, no, your emu has avian yeah. flu, and yeah. and it may be now passing it to you, oh, well. which is bad, <laughs> but it could also be passing it with with some mutations and okay. I think we're all starting to get a yeah. sense for infectious disease and mutations from COVID. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. public service announcement. Well, COVID has jumped into the deer population, for instance. Yeah, so if no, you're cuddling a deer, right. No cuddles with emus or deers. <laughs> no cuddles. Yeah, yeah. We have to be careful about yeah. that. Anyway, that's another scientist that I met. Yeah. Um, and then another f- person who was inducted into the um, fellowship was Carletta Chief, who is a Navajo mm-hmm. hydrologist. And I I found it remarkable, because I'm so involved in water issues, I really knew what she was already facing in mm-hmm. the Navajo Nation. But a lot of people at the educational forum that we had did not realize that, you know, a significant percentage of the Native population, the Indigenous population in America, meaning U.S. and Canada and other parts of the world, do not have um, access to fresh drinking water. Mm -hmm. They have food scarcity, water scarcity. They live in a food desert. It costs a tremendous amount of water for them to transport water to where they need it. And I mean, think of things, again, like COVID, when we're all being told to um, Mm -hmm. sing happy birthday while we're washing our hands with soap and water. Well, they don't even have no, no. clean, potable water yeah. to drink. In fact, at times, they have to drink the non-potable water that's available to them 
which is contaminated with things like uranium oh, geez. and um, arsenic. Uh, and of course, that makes the community less healthy. Yeah. You know. Wow, that's a nice way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the uh, mm. one of the things that you're not mentioning is that someone received a lifetime achievement award. Well, I did. That's that's why I got to go to the event and how I got introduced to the organization is is um, I was the recipient of a lifetime achievement award, Women of Discovery Lifetime Achievement Award, which is which is incredible. And I have to tell you that when this organization gives women a grant, they give it unrestricted. Mm. Now, you might just go, hmm, that's nice. I can't tell you how yeah. huge that is. I mean, mm -hmm. you and I both know I've spent my entire life never quite knowing where the next paycheck would come from, whether I've been teaching or speaking or shooting underwater or doing whatever I need to do in order to keep food on the table. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to applying for grants for support on expeditions, an awful lot of grants are geared towards people who already have a sustainable yeah. income. They're already a university well, professor. Right. They're already academics or, or they're just yeah. extremely wealthy people who are doing yeah. the exploration. Uh, and, uh, and yet most people yeah. do not have like, well, even the ones that, you know, have an academic appointment, they don't necessarily have access to the funds. Like, yeah. like Carlotta Chief was telling me that she needed an army of people in the Navajo Nation to do water testing for her. Well, the only way to get people to do that is to just, you know, pay them, give mm -hmm. them a $50 bill and saying, here's mm -hmm. what I need you to yeah. do. But then she doesn't have receipts from people. She can't no. track that payment. No. So it's all come out of her pocket, yeah. right? Yeah. But then, you know, Ray, Ray Wynn Grant has, well, so does Carlotta. They have children, right? Yeah. And when they leave home to do field work, they have to pay for childcare. Well, I'm telling you, there's not an no. expedition grant in the world that for, has a line item for childcare. Yeah, and that's, um, so there there are expenses that just don't fit into some bean counter's idea yeah. of what an expedition yeah. funding should look like. So having an unrestricted grant is so much better about keeping people in the field and they offer emergency funding too. So for instance, there were two women in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. They were wintering over for, well, an entire year north of the Arctic Circle in a little shack in the middle of nowhere and a boat was supposed to pick them up after a year. Well, COVID hit and ah. the boat didn't show up. Oh, wow. So you've got two women stranded north of the Arctic Circle in a shack surrounded by polar bears and they're getting hungry mm -hmm. and they're starting to think about how can we either live on here or or get out of here. Mm -hmm. And they reached out to Wings who provided them emergency funding. Mm -hmm. And this is a really small organization. I don't know why it's not on the the level of, you know, uh, of recognition of something like a National Geographic or whatever well, else. Perhaps that's the beauty of it is that it is small and it can yeah. be nimble and, yeah. it, and it doesn't get bogged down in layers and layers of bureaucracy. It is beautiful, but, but they've done all of their funding through, you know, grassroots efforts from mm -hmm. friend to friend kind of thing. And I, I just don't know why there's not some larger corporations mm -hmm. supporting such a powerful initiative. Well, because if you get that larger corporation involved, the larger corporation sends a bunch of bean counters. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so I don't you know. don't have a line item yeah. for child care. Well, I hope, well, maybe even just through this little podcast that we can expand the awareness yeah. of Wings World Quest. Cause Is there a... Is there a website? Wingsworldquest.org. Okay. Yep. And all of these explorers and incredible women that you've mentioned in the podcast will put their information in the show notes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and if you go to the website, you'll see the fellowships and the current projects and the events coming up. Every year, like we just had, there is the gala evening, which is fantastic, but there's also a little educational forum where each of the new fellows gets a chance to share their work with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, that, to me, well, I guess all of the collegial kind of opportunities were huge because you just never know how your work overlaps with somebody else's work. Mm -hmm. And some really exciting collaborations mm -hmm. come out of these kinds of opportunities. Well, what have I always said? Women are going to save the world. I hope so. We screwed it up. <laughs> it's your, it's on you now, babe. Well, it's it's ever more important these days. We are all connected globally through the internet, right? But um, 
but it is still those one-to-one kind of relationships. Mm-hmm. Like I've already um, followed up on some of the connections, like some some people that need help with just what sort of paperwork do you need to do to protect yourself against liability? Mm. How do you look at a contract for a grant? How do you apply for a grant? So I've already followed up with mm-hmm. several mm-hmm. women on things that sure. uh, that we spoke about. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I know that women are good. These kinds of women are really great at, at sharing. And I mm-hmm. know now I've got a new family. I could go mm-hmm. anywhere in the world to visit with some yeah. of these incredible women and um, have a place to stay, or I could learn for their work. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, there's another fantastic... <laughs> sorry, I had so many good experiences. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was sure. just going to say, you know, one of the people that presented at the gala, she just gave a couple of minutes of of talking, but Kriti is her name. She's from India. And she said that when she was recognized as a fellow in 2019, she was at rock bottom. Mm. She had started a new conservation ish- initiative. She's protecting big, big cats, basically, mm-hmm. and trying to find ways for big cats to survive in close proximity to humanity. Ah. And um, and she had started a conservation uh, or NGO and had you know more than a dozen staff working for her. And she basically was running out of money. She was kind of at the end of her rope thinking, oh my gosh, I have responsibilities to all of these people. And... I, I'm about I'm about lost. Plus, you know, she has her own family too. So she literally was at rock bottom when Wings World Quest came to her, appointed her as a 2019 fellow for conservation. Mm-hmm. And then after that, a whole lot of other things happened. This cascade of five more awards occurred and she was able to raise funds just through the additional notoriety. And now her organization is thriving mm-hmm. even through this COVID time. So I'm going to switch gears on you here. Okay. You've been talking about these incredible women and I've yeah. made a smart remark that women are going to save the world. Yeah. Now, this might be the last podcast we do before the U S election, the midterm election. Yes. So I wanted to encourage our American listeners to please, please participate. Please go out and vote, 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 vote. I mean, I don't, you know, I'd be lying if I say, I don't care who you vote for, <laughs> But we I'm not do, going to try to tell political. you. That. Right, <laughs> that's not my position. Yeah. But mm-hmm. please vote for people that share your values, that share the 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 vision for the world or for the, your community that you want to see for your daughters. Absolutely, that's what you have to think about. You can't just vote one way because you voted that way your entire life. Like. Right. You've really got to think about the issues, whether it's women's issues or climate change or the economy or whatever is important to you mm-hmm. and and think about, understand the different policy platforms and the direction that the world is going and yeah. make sure that you're leaving a great world right. for the next generation. Yeah, so I guess I can't vote for the Walrus Party again like I, do, <laughs> like I have been. Well, interestingly, today is our local election, so we're voting for town councillors and oh, a mayor yes. today. Even, that's, well, you've already voted. I voted today yeah. online because we can vote online line here. Okay, so share with our American <laughs> listeners how easy it is to vote here. Yeah, I mean, you get a pin in the mail. And, uh, like you a, can, a number, not, a pin, a, not number. a pin you put on your no, jacket. No, no, a pin yeah. number in the mail. And you literally just go online and it's a very straightforward process. If for some reason you do not have access to what you need to go online or you don't understand how to do it, there are still places that you can vote easily yeah. to get support at the library, the town hall, that kind of thing. The hockey arena. The hockey arena, <laughs> yeah. Hockey arena is in every yeah. Canadian town. is basically the hub of activity. <laughs> Where you vote. But... It's probably the most important election, your local election. Yeah, no kidding. Because those are actually where, you know, decisions about zoning right. and right. local so, bylaws, like your yeah. schools, schools, taxes, your local taxes. Local, yeah. yeah. But it's it's about how you live your life every day. And there isn't a provincial or a state or a federal government that can change the decisions of your local community. Yeah. So, so it's very, very important to get the right people mm-hmm. to make good decisions about how you want to live in your community. Exactly. Vote yeah. for the future. Vote for the future. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, it's time to say goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So this has been a little bit of an experiment, uh, having a, 
having a visual and audio podcast. So just yeah. a reminder to our, our um, listeners, if you want to see us instead of just listening to us, go to youtube.com slash Jill Heinert. That's right. And no matter what else you do, go out there and, and love, love one, one another. another. And yeah. kiss your podcast partner. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you just want to talk to the YouTube people now for a second? I do. Okay. We're still rolling on okay. YouTube. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So I want to encourage people. You can look at the camera now. Okay. There they are. They're over there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. This has been just a little bit of fun that Jill and I have decided mm -hmm. to do, which is to sit on these creaky chairs and set up some microphones because we'll get better. <laughs> the whole podcast world is changing very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you like our podcast, and please share it, uh, give it a review on any of the podcast platforms like. Uh, iTunes, iTunes. I keep saying iTunes because I'm an old dude. Yeah, you're an old dude. Yeah. Apple Podcast, <laughs> Spotify, iHeart, or, or any major podcast platform. The Into the Planet podcast is there. Or leave us a comment on YouTube, and we'll try try right. to uh, answer yeah. down as below many as we on can. YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Jill answers ninety percent of the comments that come in on her YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, the ten percent, we know who you are. Okay, just knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you want to learn more about what we're doing, just uh, go on over to intotheplanet.com or check out my book by the same name, Into the Planet. That's right. So thanks yeah. for being here with us today. I'm Robert McClellan. And I'm Jill Heinerth. And we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Take care.